Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be looking at every team's rebound players, part one. Anaheim to Montreal. And uh, you can get, you can do this as well. You can be part of this if you go on my live stream, which would mean you'd have to sub up right now. Sub yourself up and you can come on the live stream. I'll tell you what, you know what happens there? There's this. There will be frolic. Frolic, frolic, frolic. The Pearl of Wisdom show. My wife did that for me. And there is frolic. Much frolic. If you enjoy fine frolic, you'll enjoy the Pearl of Wisdom show. You'll also enjoy Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, www.steelflyers.com. It is if you like all four major sports and teams within the four major sports, any team, they do all of them, every single one, and it's again much frolic. Okay. Sub yourself up, get part of this live stream, get part of the community because you will enjoy it. I know you will because everybody does. Everybody in the land has frolic every day. Uh, yeah, so next let's get into the uh, rebound players from every team. <laughs> I almost forgot what I was talking about there. Okay, let's go. Uh, okay, Anaheim Ducks. Where are we here? The Anaheim Ducks. Um, this was interesting. Okay, my personal pick uh, was Ricard, Rickard, Ricard, Ricard, Raquel. Is that Rickard or Ricard? Ricard? I think Ricard Raquel is going to have a bounce back season. Uh, one of the big reasons why I think he's going to have a big bounce back season, it's contract year. Contract years are usually pretty big. He had his worst season. Did he, did he have his worst season of his career? Almost. Second, his first real rookie season. He, he, but that was his rookie season. He, since then, he, he's done okay. He had a 69-point season. I have a feeling he's going to get back to being a 50 to 60 point player here. He's, yeah, it's something motivates you about millions of dollars. Motivates me. I, I'd probably do really good streams if somebody said, I'll pay you millions of dollars. We do really good streams anyways, don't we? I don't need the money. But hey, if you want to challenge me on that, and see if I'll do better streams if you give me millions of dollars. You just go ahead and do that. We'll see how that works out. Um, next, oh, sorry. So we also had, somebody had Fowler. Um, again, uh, Fowler's in a long, long contract right now, 29 years old. I don't, personally, if you can tell me, this would be a bounce back season. He had a poor season last season. But he's had kind of offensively poor seasons for a while now. I think he's getting a little too comfortable there in uh, Anaheim. I don't see it. Um, Silverberg is another one. And that's another one that I do believe is... Where are, where are you, Mr. Silverberg? Oh, you were injured. You're on injured reserve. Yes, coming back from injury... Rebound seasons are also always positive. Uh, possible. Positive? Rebound? <laughs> always possible. Uh, but it's been a while since he his best year was, what, 24 goals and 43 assists? Oh, he had 49 points up here. Is he going to rebound back into that next year? Possibly. It, again, it was an injury year, so we'll give him benefit of the doubt. And then finally, Getzlaff. Uh, somebody has a big, uh, one of the, one of our members, actually a couple of our members, he did have a kind of a poor season. Think that this is, could be his last season. So he's going to give everything he's got and have a big year this year. I put him down. I don't find it likely. Tell me if there's anybody we missed any, any 
fans out there, what do you think is the most likely rebound player? I still say it's Ricard Raquel. Uh, I think he could have a very big year on his money year, his contract year. Arizona. Um, there, this is going to be a very difficult team to project. It's not looking too good on paper, as Arizona fans know. I talk to them on the groups and stuff all the time. But I got, we got Carter Hutton. Um, he, Carter Hutton had a good year a couple of years ago uh, when he was, before he went to Buffalo, when he was in, I believe, St. Louis, um, even in Nashville. And then all of a sudden he went to Buffalo and it just went woo all the way down. So being, not that Arizona is a great team, but being in a new environment, uh, new coach, new everything, it's just very – if he can even get point, uh, point nine zero zero close to that in Arizona, I'd say that's a rebound year. Um, but I, it's, it's tough pickings. He also had Gosh Despair. That would be a huge rebound year. If uh, Gosh Despair, who didn't have the worst year last year compared to – his struggles previous to this. But he's going to get top four minutes in Arizona. So I could see him possibly getting to this 37. If he could get to the 65 point, that would be enormous. But given a new opportunity, new environment, all of that, we think that Gosh Despair could possibly have a rebound year. Um, by the way, a rebound year is if you had a couple poor years or one poor year and you're going to come back and have a good one now. Um, Clay and Keller. Keller is always going to be in there. He, It's been tough for Keller. And you can't really blame him. The team has been poor. But 35 points in 56 games a year before 44 He's going to have all the pressure on him here. I think it's unlikely. I think there's just going to be too many people watching Keller this year for him to put up really good points. But every year, it feels like the guy with this kind of talent has a chance to get back to his 65-point rookie season type numbers. So he's almost always in there. The Boston Bruins... Um, there's quite a few here. One of them, the first one that comes to mind for rebound player is Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall, of course, had a terrible year in Buffalo. Um, 33 points in 53 games is not very Taylor Hall-like numbers. And it seems almost like a foregone conclusion that he's going to have a really good year this year. It would be very disappointing if he doesn't rebound. Um Howla, howla. I like saying that. Everybody howla. People say that all the time. Got a howla. Eric Howla, uh, 21 points in 51 games. Uh, the thinking here is that being in this new environment in, in a positive environment in Boston, which he hasn't really had since his Vegas times. Uh, Carolina was like a cup of coffee. Florida, short. Then he goes to Nashville where... Um, they have a very defensive system. And then, boom, he comes to Boston, which is looking for offense. Um, they pr may give him a good opportunity to play in an, an offensive role here, although they have him on the third line in cap friendly. Um, he's a candidate for sure to have more points than, than last year, maybe even in the 50-point range, if given the right opportunity, especially – if he takes that center spot from Charlie Coyle, then he's playing with Hall and Craig Smith. Then you can definitely see it. Um, Charlie Coyle, we just, the aforementioned Charlie Coyle was mentioned in my live stream as a rebound player. That would be quite the rebound player because he has been struggling offensively for quite a while. Apparently, he was injured last year. He's getting that taken care of. And that's part of the reason why you could see a rebound. Um, you could even say that even if he could get to this 
40 pointish range after having a very poor season last year, it would be um, significant for the Boston Bruins. And you could call it a rebound. So I think that's a really good one. Charlie Coyle. And I'm rooting for you, Charlie. Rooting for you. Especially coming back from injury. I like to see guys go hard coming back from injury. Um, and then Felino, which he was injured in Toronto. I mean, if you want to see what uh, a team atmosphere can be like or how a player is projected because of being in Toronto, look at Toronto. They slammed Felino. He was a bum, blah, blah, blah. Not everybody, but there's enough voices out there saying that this is Felino, okay? Felino, there's no such thing as a Felino that's a bum. If he's not putting it out, it's because he is very injured. The guy is heart and soul, man. I could definitely see him coming back and crushing it in Boston. No doubt about it with the kind of environment that they have there. If you want to know what I'm talking about environment, Taylor Hall himself said it's the best environment he's ever played in. And uh, it, it, there's, they, they have... It's the most important thing in Boston. They will trade players away. They don't care who you are. If they don't think you're going to fit the environment there in Boston, you're gone. Sagan, Hamilton, whatever. doesn't matter what your name is, when you were drafted, whatever. You're out of here. And uh, it's it pays dividends because you hear players that do appreciate that environment uh, talk about it quite a bit. The Buffalo Sabres. And... Uh, this is a little difficult because everybody had bad years last year. All right. The first person that came to mind as a bounce back year is Rasmus Dahlin. And I wrote him in there, although it's not, I don't know if you can really call it a bounce back year because he was on a 40 ish point pace somewhere around there, which is what he's been getting as far as points is concerned. I think this would actually be more of a breakout year than a bounce back year, but it was difficult to find anybody, so we put him in there. Uh, next, it was also Okpozo. Now, that one was interesting. I had a couple people on the stream say Kyle Okpozo, and at first I was like, oh, come on, he's washed up. But you know what? Changing environment to a team, a guy like Kyle Okpozo, who, you know, it would, it's been quite a while since he put up some decent numbers back when he in his Islanders days. Even his first two years in Buffalo weren't too bad, but it's been downhill since then. Change the environment, though, and uh, have, a good, have a great coach there that they do in, Gra in Granado. And you could see a guy, you could see somebody like Ocpozo going, you know what, I got a new fire in me. And uh, he's in a, he comes back and has a great year. So I thought that was a really good one. And then, of course, Jack Eichel. Um, assuming he ever played in Buffalo. He is a Sabre, so we put him in there. If they could somehow convince him, which I think is highly unlikely, um, he certainly could have a bounce back here. Next, Calgary Flames. And quite a few here, too. Um, the first one that came up um, in on the stream was Noah Hannafin. And I had to look at it. Is Noah Hannafin going to have a bounce back year because did, did he really have the year everybody ever expected and I would say probably not I mean 2018-19 I remember he had a pretty decent year but he's struggled since then so I guess you could say it's a bounce back year I suppose it might be finally this is what we expected here I think if he really had a good year it would be more of a finally that's what we've been looking for, Mr. Hannaf Hannafin. Uh, next, Goudreau. And, yeah, this would be absolutely huge. Goudreau is, one of, is, is such a good human. You root for the guy. He had 99 points in 82 games in 2018-19. Almost a 100-point season. And he's been under a point a game for the last two years. We... He could be the big bounce back this year. Uh, having confidence, Sutter having obvious confidence in them because they were talking about trading everybody away 
and all of that. And he, he was kept or they didn't get enough or whatever, but I'm sure they're going to lean it as, no, we have confidence in him and all of that. And uh, yeah, this could be the big, uh, big year for Goudreau. If, uh, if, if he, if he's feeling it, it just seems to me that Goudreau hasn't been feeling it. Also, it seems to me that Goudreau hasn't really been playing with, He's been propping up Sean Monaghan for quite a bit. Uh, he needs to get... I like this line the way they have it here in uh, Cap Friendly. A guy like Matthew Kachuk, he needs to play with guys like that. And getting Blake Coleman and, you know, some grit in there to help Goudreau out uh, to be able to let him have a little more room to move certainly could change things. Um, Markstrom. Markstrom... Uh, was that his first year back? It was his first year, and he didn't put up spectacular numbers. You could say that was a lot to do with defense, but when I watched it, like he had, he went on a good run, and then it just his consistency level wasn't really all there. Now, I was never a huge Goudreau guy. I never thought of him as a marquee number one goaltender. Um, so it's not really much of a surprise to me. What kind of a bounce back are we talking about here? We're talking about a difference of 0 .8, 0 0.08 percentage points because a 0 .904 ain't high enough. But honestly, as a number one, a 0 .912 isn't either. It's not really just a bounce back here. It's going to be a crush. And there's moments when Markstrom looks like he's going to crush the world. It's the inconsistency. So a bounce back would would be a very consistent season for um, for Markstrom, which you could say really has never been. So, um, and then Monaghan. I mean, that would be an absolutely enormous bounce back season. He's going, he had some injury issues. He's going to, uh, I, I think he's going to be ready for camp. Um, was it his wrist? Or somebody help me there with what it was, hip or something like that. Um, but it's been a steady down. It's been 82, 48, 28, and 50. These are not numbers that are acceptable for a first-line center, even a second-line center. Um, something, a big bounce back here. This could be a bounce back season for Monaghan if he's healthy and he's getting into those areas. I think he has to play for with Goudreau to do that. But we'll see. Um, and I put that down as unlikely. I'm just not feeling it with Monaghan. Sorry, I just don't feel it like he's going to be coming back anytime soon. Just, has people surprised me before? Absolutely. Is that going to happen with Monaghan? We'll see. Uh, Carolina. Bounce back season's the first one that comes right up, of course. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. Of course, we're talking about Kokaneyame. Gotta like say that. Kokaneyame. Say it like that. Kokaneyame. No, you gotta go, eh. That's better. Try Just keep practicing. Um, Kokaneyame did not have a great season last year. He's only 21 years old, though, man. If you're getting 20 points in the NHL at 21, especially with what he was asked to do last year, you're doing all right, Okay. And the thing was, is he had a better season in his first, his rookie season. And that's the thing. When a player comes out and has a great season like he did in his rookie season, and then the numbers start like kind of waning a little bit, people start thinking that it, it's, it's, the perception is that he's not very good, but I think he's just overplayed as a young player and he's going to go to Carolina where they're going to maybe baby him a little bit. Um, and he could just find a spot. I, I like the idea of playing him on the left wing. Now I was talking to Montreal fans. I said that when he was on his left wing, on the left wing, he didn't look very good. His game is set up for that. Honestly, I didn't really see him much on the left side. So hard for me to say. I just think he looks like more of a left winger and it's going to, take some pressure off of him to not have to play against the other team's top line center. He can just work himself into the lineup. So this could be a bounce back year for sure for Kokanian. Anderson, if he's fully healthy, 
Anderson in Toronto often looked like he was a more than legitimate number one goaltender. Um, again, his numbers were not exceptional, but a .918, I mean, this was a team that never really had a stacked defense, and he put up some decent numbers. Then he gets injured. Carolina is banking that he's coming back from injury and they can get the Anderson of old. And if he does, he's going to put up stellar numbers in Carolina. That He hasn't seen a team that plays defense like this before. So I think he'll be very, very happy as long as he can be healthy. Um, uh, Bear had a poor year in uh, Edmonton. Now, I live in Edmonton, and I can say that Ethan Bear had some – Kind of maybe got a little too emotional about outside things outside of the game. If he can get his head into the game, focus on what he is and what he needs to do for his team and not worry about the outside chatter. Um, Ethan Bear is a native Canadian. Freaking awesome dude. But there, there was some slander in that area or what have you. I don't know the whole story. But I know he didn't take it well. And it seemed to affect his game. So I could see him having a really big year in Carolina, which leads us to the final one, D'Angelo. This was, I, I forgot to tell you, this was my pick. D'Angelo was my pick. Goudreau was in Calgary as my pick. This is my pick. I think D'Angelo is going to have a crushing year this year. He's coming back. Uh, people, you know, I don't know what happened in New York. I don't know. But I do know that uh, they obviously must have discussed this with a lot of Ranger players that are playing on this team right now. Jesper Faust, uh, Derek Stepan, um, Ranta, who just came in, Brady Shea. They've got a lot of Rangers players here, and I can't see them... You know, a lot. They would have went to them and said they could have said, you know, I wouldn't do it or whatever. But they seem to give him the stamp of approval for Anthony D'Angelo to come back. And if he can, if he gets just fo again focus on his game, sort of like what they're saying about Brett Pesci, the guy's an offensive star out there on the ice. Not the greatest defensively, but his offense more than makes up for it. And I think he can have a huge year. Huge in Carolina. That was my pick. Uh, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, hard to do here because everybody, most players had great years last year. Um, but we went with uh, Darcy. One of, we went with Darcy Kemper, whose numbers were not great last year, 0 .907. But that was playing against uh, Arizona team that basically was. Allowing shots left, right, and center. Very difficult for him. Um, it wasn't his stellar, stellar year, but I think he was getting worn down. Uh, 1920, I mean, he took a lot of rubber in 1920. And then you got COVID and everything, and the fact that your team is obviously not good enough, and that weighs on you mentally. Coming to a Colorado team that has – was the best defensive team in the league last year. What do you think Darcy Kemper's numbers are going to look like? I think it's pretty likely that he's going to crush it. Crush it. Also, Kadri. I think Kadri could give his head a shake, get back to his old – get back to be, get to being what he actually can be, which is a fantastic second-line center. Just getting that temper in check, man. Get the temper in check, Kadri. Uh, it almost seems to me sometimes that he actually is proud of the way he plays. Um, and there's been guys in the past that have had to change themselves or they would be out of the game. Um, what's that Minnesota player? Can't remember his name now. You guys can tell me in the comments section. But he's one, he has to get that straightened out in his head. Or he's not going to be in this league anymore. But if he can, he's got all the talent in the world. And he can focus it on a little more on offense. I could see him having a really great, but I don't think that's likely. By the way, that's a not likely. Chicago Blackhawks, lots of guys here that could have bounce back seasons. Uh, Jonathan Taves, of course, being injured, 
I, I had a little discussion with this on the stream. The, the, um, and uh, there's a lot of people that kind of sell Tay Shore. I don't know why. The guy is a freaking monster. Okay. I would never say Tay's can't do something. He came back, whatever his fatigue issues are, if he's back from that, I think he could absolutely crush this year. Um, that's my guy, but I liked all of them. Somebody, can, another couple of people on the stream came up with Jake McCabe. McCabe has had injury issues. If he can stay healthy, uh, yeah, he can have a bounce back season. If he could just be what he is, have an opportunity without injury, he is a great shutdown defenseman. Very good shutdown defenseman. Top four. It's been a struggle for him, though, injury-wise. So uh, it's all about the injuries. And Jones. Jones, not a lot of people talk about it, but Jones has not really played well the last two years. Um, people think of him as a number, as a one-two defenseman. And, I mean, you can make a case for it, but you can make a lot more of a case for it his first two years as a Blue Jacket, or, sorry, in 18 and 19. Since then, it's been kind of downhill defensively. Um, but here in Chicago, who this they, who plays a very offensive system, I think Seth Jones can start being what he really is, and that is a more pure offensive defenseman, much in this like much in the uh, mold of like a Hamilton. I love Tortorella. But I think he made a mistake in Columbus trying to turn this guy into a shutdown guy. It's just not his makeup. And in Chicago, I think he's going to get a ton of chance to put up offense. And that uh, that's and he's going to blow it up. I really think he's going to do well in Chicago is what I'm trying to say. Columbus Blue Jackets. Turn the page. Uh, first one that comes, I mean... Patrick Lyon, I mean, what a horrible year last year. Whatever was going on in Winnipeg, um, I don't know. This guy's got his own mind. And is it Lindsay is going to have to work with this guy to re or, or just let him go or something. He's got his own mind. Didn't get along with people in Winnipeg. Came to Columbus out in public, basically slammed Tortorella. That's kind of arrogant. Tortorella is one of cup. He's one of the best coaches of this era, and you're slamming him. I, I was, I, I was kind of supporting this guy. I like people to have their own mind and all that kind of stuff like that. But to me, that was a little disrespectful. But we'll see what. It's got to be a huge year. As long as he backs it up with his actions and has a huge year this year, say whatever you want. Really, back it up with your action, and this is the year he's got to do it. Uh, Jenner, Boone Jenner had a bit of a down year offense, but he was used more in a shutdown role, and he did very well. One of the most underrated players in the NHL is Boone Jenner. Guy gives it every single freaking night, playing against the other team's top line. I just love him. I wish, I wish the Oilers could wrestle Jenner away from Columbus somehow, but they love him there and for good reason. Had a bit of a down year offensively, uh, sort of. He would have 34 points a year before he had 24. His point production had slipped. I think in the new coach, though, you could see him have a big year this year. Maybe get back into this 40-some points uh, projection. Uh, Columbus was tough because there wasn't a lot of uh, – a lot of players have struggled for a while there. Um, Nyquist. Coming back from injury, I don't think it's likely that he has a great year, to tell you the honest truth. But we'll see. Um, but my pick was Lion A, as was pretty much everybody else's. That's going to be the bounce back, uh, we think. Uh, Dallas Stars, quite a few here, of course. Guys coming back from injury are always going to be on the list. Tyler Sagan only had two points last year. Uh, this could... Definitely be a bounce back year. It could be a big bounce back year. Because the year before he had 50 points in 69 games. That might have been injury related. 
bounce back would be back to a point a game. And gosh, Dallas needs that. Dallas needs that Tyler Sagan that's back to a point a game. If they're really going to have a chance to win a cup, they, they've got some old guys like P- Radulov at 35 and Pavelski at 37. They got some older guys, and they need a guy like Tyler Sagan to step up huge. And he could do it. I believe in him. I know you're watching. I know you're watching. Who, who's not watching, right? Tyler, we believe in you, my friend. We believe. There's a little Perlo dance for you. Okay, next, Holtby. Very unlikely. I, I don't like his attitude, honestly. Wait, Dallas fans, if you're sweet. He calls out teammates on the ice, and you know, that's just a red flag for me for goaltenders to do that. He crushed it in Washington, and they got by regardless, but I saw it creep in over and over again. And it seemed as he got older and not as good as a goaltender, it became worse. So I don't know if there's a goalie coach out there that thinks that they can get him back to what he was before. But there's people in the stream that believe that he could have a bounce back here. Suter. Suter did not have the best year offensively this that last year. If he gets a chance to play with Miro, he's going to I can see him get a couple more points. I could. Uh and uh, he's going to play a lot of minutes, we'll, but I think he could get – that's a pretty good one. Uh, that's all we could get. Tell me what, what you guys think, Dallas fans. Who else could you put in the bounce back? Uh, Detroit Red Wings. Um, Larkin. Larkin could have a huge year. That was my pick. Uh, full year with Jacob Verana. Tyler Bertuzzi back. It's no wonder he didn't have a great year last year. His best line mates were injured, uh, and uh, all the focus is always on Dylan Larkin. You take out Dylan Larkin, you can take out this team. Until they get a big enough second-line center or another stud center that can take a little bit of the heat off of Larkin, he could struggle. But I think with Jacob Brana there now and Tyler Bertuzzi coming back, who's also a bounce back because of his injury, we'll leave it at that, and uh, Jacob Verana could uh, will pro. I think Jacob Verana for sure, for sure, is going to have a really good year this year. I'd be very surprised if that's not the case. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. We had the first one R and H. A um, little bit. I don't know. I thought he had a pretty good year last year. The guy, the guys that do it all for a do everything type player. Thirty five points in fifty two games. Okay. But a bounce back would be back to the 70 point. And I think he can do it. So it wasn't my guy, but I put him in there uh, because if he gets back to the 70 point pace and he has the capabilities of doing it, then you can call that a bounce back season. Duncan Keith, and I think this is just highly unlikely. Um, he didn't have a great year in Chicago. Uh, his his uh, fancy stats, which I do pay attention to, showed that every player that uh, Duncan Keith played with last year played worse with them than anyone else that they played with. So that's not a good sign. But he could put up more offense because there's just so much offense in Edmonton. So his numbers all almost for sure will bounce back a little bit, at least. How much? Hard to say, but that was one of the guys. The guys were pretty bullish on him having a bounce back. I put unlikely. Say whatever you want. Uh, Turris is the guy I picked, and that's just simply because I have heard that he's crushing it in the gym this year. And that guy just looked thinner and thinner every year since he got that six million dollar a year contract. He for he. Human, you get that kind of money and it's like, should I go to the gym or should I go wherever you want to do with your $6 million? You know what I'm saying? Vacations, whatever. It can happen to anybody, but apparently he's been crushing it. Hardcore. So I'm going to say him. I'm going to say he comes back. Hope you do it, Terrence. Hope you do it, Kyle. Get back into shape and being the guy that we all know that you can be. For sure. That would be huge for the Oilers, too. Koskinen would be the other one. 
after playing like what 15 16 games in a row last year he just went south and uh i don't know i think it's unlikely i don't think he's gonna have what is a bounce back year for Costco? And didn't he have a two point a point zero point one nine one seven there one year? Yeah, two years ago, well, or the year before, and then a point nine zero six. So somewhere in there, do I think he's going to get there? Honestly, I don't, but I hope he does. But if you ask me, I guess you just did. I'd say no. Florida Panthers. Um, there's only one we came up with. Uh, there was Sam Bennett, but I wouldn't really call that a bounce back here because he kind of bounced back as soon as he got to Florida. And it wasn't a bounce back. It was a finally getting the offense that everybody should have known that he had, but he didn't get the opportunity in Calgary to do it. And he finally got the opportunity and he hit it out of the park. And I think he'll continue to do that. But, it's Bobrovsky, and that's a huge unlikely because I just don't see this guy's attitude changing. Um, the guy's way too smiley all the time. I'm sorry. You're not – dude, like he, he looks like a guy to me that doesn't think he has – he's – you know, he still thinks he's a great goaltender. You're not – you're not a great goaltender, dude. You, something in your mind, you have to get back to re, that realization. And I'm not saying shame or feel terrible or no, no. But at least realize, hey, I'm not a Vesna goaltender anymore. I'm not. I'm not winning any Vesnas like this. And I want to get back to being what that is. And he just doesn't look like a guy that's prepared to do that. So we'll see if he does. But blaming your defenseman, like I said, it's a red flag to me. Uh L.A. Kings, Drew Doughty. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think he can – I think there's going to be a fire in this team with Philip Dano coming and giving Kopitar a chance to play some serious offense here. I like McClellan as a coach. I think this team's been going on the right trajectory, and I think you could see some fireworks from Drew Doughty feeling that – oh my gosh, you know what? We have a chance here. I think a few of these veterans would like to really feel that. And uh, I think that could happen here. Uh, Drew Doughty could see his offensive numbers go up quite a bit. Um, his, defensively, he's gone downhill quite a bit. I don't know how much that's going to change. But I could see him getting back to the 45-point or 60-point range. I could. If, if the right fire in him... I could see it happening. Uh, and the other one is Arvidsson. After leaving Nashville and uh, having an opportunity to wear, uh, be on a team that really needs offense and is going to give them every opportunity to use that offense, um, I would say I kind of hope they play him with Kopitar, to tell you the honest truth. As it stands, he's going to play with Deno and Kempe. But... The fact of the matter is, actually, I would prefer he plays with Velarde. But just the mindfulness that you are going to a team that is telling you, we want your offense, I think could change an individual into the type of confidence that could bring back that offense, which with Victor Arvidsson, um, last year, he can do better than 40 points in a season. He's got 61 point seasons, and it's been like 48 and 58, 28 and 57, 20, you know, like he's better than that. And he's still not, he's not that old. I see no reason why he can't get back up to the 61 point player, 30 goal pace that he was at, at one time. Minnesota Wild. Um, tough. They all had great seasons last year. Uh, somebody said Matt Dumba. They think Matt Dumba can uh, put more offense up than he did last year and the year before, get back up to this 50-point pace. I could see it. Personally, I think he's just become uh, focusing on more of a two-way guy, and that offense might not get there. But with Suter being gone um, and Susie being gone, he's, there's going to be more ice time available for him. And maybe more power play time, which case 
definitely, I could see his numbers going up. Goligoski is another one. Don't count this Goligoski out at 36. Just wait till you watch this guy skate and the way he plays. He's so, um, what's the word? I'm not compact. Um, I can't remember though. He, he doesn't waste any energy at all is what I'm trying to say. There's a word for that, but it's not coming to my head at the moment. Ah, whatever. Um, I think he could put up a lot of offense. Arizona didn't have much offense. They played a terrible defensive system there. He's going to come with a much more flow with De with Evison. I could see him crushing this year. That was my guy. My guy was uh, Alex Goligoski to have. Uh, he, he was a 40, 40 point guy at one time. Um, how long ago? You know, 42, 36, 37, 36. I think he could get back to being somewhere in the 40, maybe even have a career year. I mean, I seriously think he could have a career year in Minnesota. Um, next, the Montreal Canadiens in our final one of the day, final one of this broadcast. Tons. And the first one, of course, we have to talk about and everybody is rooting for. And I know you're watching, Jonathan, because who wouldn't be watching, right? Jonathan Drouin. Uh, what the balls on this guy? You are a amazing, dude. You go realize you got an anxiety issue. By the way, bipolar depression had to overcome myself. So I'm, I'm with you on this. Maybe even on the emotional side of it. But uh, um, to come back and the first thing you do is you go right out in public and say, I had anxiety, couldn't sleep. He was having, uh, yeah, he couldn't sleep for days sometimes. And then trying to play two games in a row. Um, so tough. And uh, pure balls, dude. Awesome. Way to go, my friend. Love it. I think you're going to come back and crush. And if there's somebody not rooting for you, you got to go to the Perlos house of spanking right now, my friend. I'll set you up right now. Give me a call. Get you in. Everybody needs to get spanking every once in a while. And you certainly do. If you're not rooting for Jonathan Drouin, then I don't know what to say. I'm rooting for you. Price. How do you put Price when he had such a good stellar playoffs? Having a good regular season. Finally getting back to having a full, good, regular season. Um, could happen. Need it to happen. Really need it to happen this year. After losing a lot of key pieces, uh, putting a lot of faith in some very young players for next year. Really going to need it. Having Hoffman play virtually no defense whatsoever. Really going to need Price to come back in the regular season and play very, very well, just to make the playoffs. My guy was Drouin, but I also have another one, Perot. Watch out for Machu Perot. This guy was always buried in Winnipeg because they had a solid top six. If he can find a spot, if he can take Mike Hoffman's spot up there, because he can play all over the place, left wing, right wing. He can play down your lineup. He plays with so much passion. Every ounce of energy he has in every shift, man. You're going to freaking love this guy. And if he can get himself in the top six, he has skills, man. He can put up some decent points. He's not a big dude. You can't play him super high minutes. But I would not be surprised if he can get back to this 40 to 45 point base on a Montreal team that has, uh, if they give, if somebody gives him a really good opportunity, somebody being Montreal to do so, like he did in Winnipeg not too long ago, I could see it happening. And then Savard, and you're like, Savard? What do you mean Savard? He won a cup last year. He had a bad year. Sorry. Fortunate to get traded to Tampa Bay. Did what he could. I don't know if he was injured, but he didn't look good. Probably the worst year of his career last year. So... Is he going to come back in Montreal, or is he one of those guys that has his body starting to break down? I mean, this guy is a warrior. He's played blocked shots, everything, played tough his whole career. And 
He looked tired to me. Maybe he was injured. Maybe he's healthy now and he's going to play better. But we put him down as a bounce back player. That's our full 42. That's all we have to give for you today. Uh, come to the live stream. Give you a little pearl of dance there. Sub yourself up. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door. Helicopter, pearlocopter to you. Five. Hernandez and Melissa. Also, hitting subs gets us to the point where we're going to get a Jet O Frolic. And I'm going to come to all the lands and we're going to go to games together. That's the dream. That's the dream. It's going to happen, man. Sub up. Help us out. Help us get huge. I want to come see you. Take you to a game. It's going to be a lot of frolic. There will be frolic. Okay, bye.